Thoracic and respiratory medicine expert Peter Barnes was in New Zealand for a multi-city speaking tour as a guest of AstraZeneca. Before flying back to the UK, New Zealand doctor caught up with Professor Barnes. First, we asked him about asthma COPD overlap syndrome, or ACOS. It's usually easy to distinguish asthma and COPD, but there are some patients with COPD who also have features of asthma. And we think that that's because they may have both diseases, asthma and COPD, occurring together. There may be a form of COPD uh, where you see eosinophils, which are the characteristic inflammatory cell of asthma. But it's an important syndrome to recognize because these are the COPD patients who show a beneficial response to inhaled steroids, whereas the majority of patients with COPD have very little response to steroid therapy. It's probably occurring in 10 to 20 percent of COPD patients. They probably uh, have more frequent exacerbations, which is another reason uh, why we need to treat them effectively. In the past, there's been very little research on this ACOS syndrome because they've usually been excluded from trials of asthma and COPD because of the uncertainty of the diagnosis. Well, these patients need to be treated as if they have COPD and asthma, so we would give them long-acting bronchodilators and inhaled steroids. So they would commonly be treated with uh, combination inhaler that has a steroid and a long-acting beta agonist such as Symbicort, but also with <coughs> a long-acting anticholinergic such as Teotropium. Well, it's quite difficult to diagnose um, in general practice, but it's characterized by a greater reversibility to bronchodilators than you would normally see in COPD. If you can measure nitric oxide in the breath, that would usually be increased, which would be unusual for COPD. And probably the best way to diagnose it in clinical practice is to give a trial of oral steroids. And if there's a significant improvement in a patient who otherwise has typical COPD, then that would be a good indication that they may benefit from inhaled steroids. Poor adherence in COPD and asthma treatments can also be an issue. But particularly patients with asthma because during times when they don't have symptoms they often don't take regular medication as they should. So poor compliance, especially with inhaled steroids, is very very common and is probably the main reason why many patients with asthma are not properly controlled. In fact, 50% of patients had poor control of asthma in a survey that was done in Europe, and similar surveys in other countries confirm that there's very low <coughs> control of asthma in the community. And this is almost certainly because they're not taking regular inhaled steroids. So the best way to address poor adherence is to use the combination uh, inhaler that has formoterol that can be used as a reliever uh, to relieve the symptoms because every time they take the inhaler for symptom relief they're also taking an additional dose of inhaled steroid and for many patients this is probably the only time they ever take an inhaled steroid because they fail to take the regular inhaled steroid most of the time. This is Reynold Castaneda for New Zealand Doctor.